Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Sushal Sudish and I'm your instructor for this MS700 Themes Administrator Examination course. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to plan for Teams governance. Microsoft Teams provide a rich set of tools to implement governance capabilities for organization. When planning for governance, you should consider the following areas. Group and team creation, naming, classification, and guest access. How do you manage teams feature management? And how are you going to manage group and teams expiration, retention, and archiving, etc.? To quickly implement governance in teams, organizations should focus on these areas. Who can create the group within your organization? What sort of a naming convention you want to set as a template for your organization? What meeting capabilities you would like to provide for your users? Do you want to include any sort of external third-party apps to be approved? Or do you want to enable guest access or external user access within your team's collaboration platform? And how are you going to manage and maintain your data security within your teams? Organization oftentimes implements strict controls on how teams are named and classified, whether guests can be added as team member and who can create teams, etc. You can configure each of these area by using Azure Active Directory. This is the following table, which includes some of the questions you should consider when planning for group and tenant creation policies. Does your organization require a specific naming convention? Do team creators need the ability to assign organization-specific classification to teams? Does your organization require limiting who can create teams? Or do you need to restrict the ability to add guest teams on per teams basis as well? Please note that limiting groups and team creation can slow your users' productivity because many Office 365 services require that groups to be created for services to function. So after you have determined your requirements, you can implement them by using Azure AD controls. Then organizations might have additional requirements for setting policies for exploration, retention, and archiving teams and teams data. Group expiration policies can be configured to automatically manage the life cycle of a group and retention policies to preserve or delete information as needed. Teams can also be archived to preserve a point-in-time view of teams that no longer actively require you to use. So some of the things you need to consider are listed down in this table. Some of the questions you need to ask are, do you require specifying an expiration date for teams? Do you require specific date retention policies to be applied to teams? Does organization expect to require the ability to archive inactive teams to preserve the content in a read-only state? Another important aspect of governing and lifecycle management for teams is the ability to control what features users will have access to. Messaging, meeting, and calling features can be managed either at Office 365 tenant level or per user level as well. So some of the things you need to consider are, do you require limiting Teams features to your user tenant? Do you require limiting Teams features for a specific user as well? Once you have identified your team's governance topic, you should consider the following steps to develop a governance roadmap for your team's rollout project. Things like document your organizational requirement, plan to implement your specific requirement, and communicating and publishing your policies to inform your team's users and behavior they can expect. Planning for lifecycle management is essential for organization to get the most out of Microsoft Teams. Like most projects, creation and management of Teams passes through beginning, middle, and end stages. However, Teams has such a variety of users that it may not always be obvious 
which stage a project is in. Having a plan for lifecycle management will help track an organization's project as they go through these stages. In teams, individual users have its sole life cycle within the following sequence. Initiate, active, and sunset. The key decision points to consider the beginning stages include what's the team's purpose? Who belongs on the team? Will the team be private or public? Who will have permission to create channels? What initial channel will be added to the teams, etc. The decision points that should be considered in the stage of middle stage include who will monitor usage to identify problems? What metrics will be used to determine teams' health? Identifying any teams that have reached the end of their useful life. An important decisions point related to the end stage include defining what the end of teams' life look like, documenting best practices and lessons learned, archiving data if necessary, etc. You can configure and manage the team's life cycle through the team's admin center, the Office 365 admin center, and Azure AD admin center as well. If you wish to automate specific management tasks throughout the team's life cycle, you can do so by using PowerShell and Graph API automation tools as well. So this is the diagram which shows you about all the type of automation you can enable during different life cycle within teams. Now that we have learned about how to govern teams and what are the life cycle stages of teams, in the next lesson, we're gonna explore teams management tools. So we'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.